Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. This is a rare tag video. I was tagged by Brian at Bookish who wants to get as many content uh, providers as possible making a video about a banned book of their choice. And normally uh, when uh, one thinks of banned books it's, it's usually associated with sort of American efforts to ban it uh, in schools, in libraries and it you know, sometimes it can be very sort of state based that one state will want to ban it and others won't. Um, now, I wanted to avoid that, which is why I've gone for a British author's book. But actually, um, it was mainly banned in America, uh, although, interestingly, uh, it's been banned in two media and more of which later. So the book, uh, which is currently residing in my shed, is one of my favourite books, and that is Anthony Burgess's a Clockwork Orange and it's banned, it was banned for its portrayal of uh, sexual violence and violence because it's a dystopian tale about uh, uh, a youth gang that run amok and they're able to run amok because the authorities basically have no control over society hence the dystopian element that they that, that it's a bit sort of Lord of the Flies that you know the survival of the fittest or the most aggressive the most testosterone fueled uh, which means young men and uh, these guys go around for entertainment robbing stealing beating up people and as I say sexual assault and the gangs sort of have internal pressures uh, the consequence of which their leader uh, is uh, captured by the authorities who want to test out an experimental um, uh, device on him that will it's a sort of a, a, an aversion therapy will make him not want to indulge in violence ever again because as soon as he moves towards being violent the aversion therapy brings up all sorts of uh, internal resistance to it and in that way it's a commentary on the it's a moral tale you know he will he have free will uh the violence of the state in taking away his choice versus what a terrible human being who refused to have any um, uh, sort of allegiance and adherence to the state's rules or moral behaviours of what was and wasn't acceptable. That's that's the core of the book. Um, and as I say, it was banned because of its, its portrayal of violence and sexual violence uh, periodically. Uh, now, before I dive into my analysis of it, I will also just say that uh, a film was made of it by Stanley Kubrick in 1971. And due to what he and others, a sort of a tabloid moral panic, saw as copycat violence, where youth would dress up in the uniforms of this gang. And I'll uh, put pictures here. So here is an original picture from, from the, the time around 1971. And it went on into the into the sort of the 80s because there's a band here called the Addicts, punk band. Now, I'm not saying they were responsible for violence, but they've taken the iconography of uh, of the of the of the um, the youth gang and they made it their sort of brand uniforms for their music kind of thing. Um, and it was Kubrick himself who pulled the movie and for the for the duration of his lifetime. That movie could not be shown in the UK. Uh, presumably he didn't have the same rights over in overseas territories. But in the UK he did and it was not allowed to be shown. And there was a cinema in King's Cross called The Scala, which was a brilliant movie house I used to go to. It would show five different films a day. Each day was different. It would do all-nighters over the weekend, which was sort of themed. Uh, it was the first cinema that uh, I was uh, subject to an attempted pick up by a man. Um, anyway, that cinema dared to show a Clockwork Orange and basically was taken to court but for breaking Kubrick's um, ban on it. And they lost and they went bankrupt and the cinema went out of business, which is tragic, although, you know, it was a fairly reckless move on their part. So for most UK citizens interested in in the book or in the subject, you would have read it long before you ever got to see it. You could only see it by travelling abroad, which is what I did. I saw it in Paris. I'm 
around 1988. Uh, and now you can see it because now that Kubrick is dead, uh, that his ban no longer holds. So there it's a case of self-censorship by the artist. It was Kubrick who pulled the movie. It wasn't, I mean, the tabloids were calling for it to be banned, but it was ultimately only Kubrick had the power uh, and, and he banned it, he pulled it. So that's sort of by the by. So I just want to talk about why I like the book really. Um, you know, it has some very unsavoury depictions in the same way that Lolita by Nabokov uh, has some very kind of near the knuckle content. But it's a work of literature. It's a dystopian novel, but it is done with high literary value. So the first thing that everyone associates with it is that Burgess made up a slang lingo for the gang to speak. Um, and it was based on sort of Russian, but it was his own sort of invention. And straight away that elevates it from commercial fiction or pulp fiction, because it has, you know, the, the reader has to sort of um, penetrate and translate this code. You know, some editions will come with a glossary of terms, others won't. But you very soon find out as the words are repeated, in, in different sentences in different contexts you work out what these words mean yeah, it's brilliantly done the second thing is when I uh, after I'd read it I managed to track down uh, on TV I think it was Burgess talking about it and why the main character was called Alex and he gave a 10 minute disquisition on why he had chosen the name Alex what was symbolic about the letter A and the whole name, I can't remember it, and I've got online to see if I could, you know, track it down. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be anywhere. But it was a brilliant disquisition on a literary decision that he had taken based on the symbology of the name. But what I have been able to track down is um, him explaining the number of chapters, because this book has two different versions. The one that was published in America has 20 chapters. The one that was published uh, in the rest of the world has 21 chapters. And Burgess always said the reason for this was he needed the money. And in order to get the American edition published, he went with the editors or the publisher's decisions and cut the 21st chapter. He was happy for that to be cut. Um, they are two very, very different uh, endings to the book tonally and about the morality of the book um, so this is one of the justifications that Burgess gave for uh, the chapter 21 the extra chapter that is so different from the rest of the book and changes the morality of the book so uh, let me just find this to read it to you the book I wrote is divided into three sections of seven chapters each. Take out your pocket calculator and you'll find that these add up to a total of 21 chapters. 21 is the symbol of human maturity, or used to be, since at 21 you got the vote and assumed adult responsibility. Whatever its symbology, the number 21 was the number I started out with. Novelists of my stamp are interested in what is called arithmology meaning that the number has to mean something in human terms when they handle it. The number of chapters is never entirely arbitrary. Just as a musical composer starts off with a vague image of bulk and duration, so a novelist begins with an image of length. And this image is expressed in the number of chapters into which the work will be disposed. Those 21 chapters were important to me. OK, so that's him justifying why this very strange chapter 21 it's sort of tacked on to the end. And in a way, what I'm about to say in discussing the two different endings might be a spoiler, but it also kind of depends on which edition you end up reading. Uh, I have to say the film uh, version is similar to the American version that it sort of stopped after chapter 20. So chapter 20, or, or the lead up to chapter 20 is that, as I say, once Alex has been captured by the authorities, they try this experimental um, technique on him based on sort of aversion therapy to make him renounce violence, but not with any free will, not, you know, not voluntarily. It's a, 
they've they, they've sort of reconditioned his brain and his bodily re responses. Chapter twenty one. Uh, sorry, chapter 20, where it ends there, is that Alex is deconditioned and returns to his sort of um, primitive, animalistic, violent self. Chapter 21 is, no, Alex is happy to have been reconditioned and settles down to the normal adult life of marriage and children, this, that and the other. Um, and it goes back to what I just read, the, the Burgess quote, whereby um, he's sort of saying 21 is the age of maturity when, you know, we are supposed to surrender our juvenile sort of uh, behaviours and sign up to the morality of society. I, you know, I find that unconvincing, but I will just say in the same way as I saw that di disquisition on why he chose the name Alex, this thing about the symbology of numbers, again, highly literary, utterly credible but it's more complicated than that but it again it does suggest to me why this is a highly literary book which makes it worth reading whatever the morality of it okay so he discusses the morality of that extra chapter 21 because it is so tonally at odds with the rest of the book and again sorry just gonna have to bear with me while i, I read this quote there is no hint of this change of intention in the 20th chapter. The boy is conditioned, then deconditioned, and he foresees with glee a resumption of the operation of free and violent will. I was cured, all right, he says. And so the American book ends. So the film ends too. The 21st chapter gives the novel the quality of genuine fiction, an art founded on the principle that human beings change. There is in fact not much point in writing a novel unless you can show the possibility of moral transformation or an increase in wisdom, operating in your chief character or characters. Even trashy bestsellers show people changing. When a fictional work fails to show change, when it merely indicates that human character is set, stony, unregenerable, then you are out of the field of the novel and into that of the fable or allegory. The American or Kubrickian orange is a fable. The British or world one is a novel. So what what um, Burgess is saying there is that novels have to have a character arc. The, the, the character has to go on a journey and it's a moral journey. It's a journey towards insight and self-understanding. And that's why even though chapter 21 reads wholly at odds with the rest of the book, it's vital to him to make this a novel rather than an allegory or a sort of cartoonish parable or, or, or whatever. Um, he was very traditional in his view of the novel in that sense, because I reject the notion of character arcs. I reject the notion that, that novels have to have a moral um, understanding or underpinning. Uh, I'm much more interested in what fiction can tell us about the nature of our actual world and the fictional echoes within our world, which are those surface presentations of reality that hide and mask the true power relations beneath them. To me, that is moral, but it's not the morality of the individual character. So I, I you know, I reject everything he says in that quote, as I say, that, that novels have to have a, uh, a character arc, the character has to change at the you know the but the point of the end of the novel than that they started that it's a moral journey it's a journey of moral understanding i reject all of those i don't reject um burgess's right to say to state that about his own book um but it's it's not my preferred way of approaching fiction and the novel both as a reader and a writer i believe people are generally stuck in patterns of behavior that's why we have the psychoanalytical industry um, so that's sort of where we end up with the book except to say that Burgess I don't think he self-censored himself in the way that Kubrick did but by you know he made a in a way a sort of censorship decision based on economics for the American edition that he took the money and run because he needed the money at the time and it's a totally understandable decision I'm not saying he was wrong 
but it's a sort of self-censorship through economic pressure, which is an interesting subsection of self-censorship. That you you know you 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 are prepared to change your art, your work of art, in order for it to be acceptable and paid for, so that you can feed yourself. I get it. Um, and every individual artist has to make that decision for themselves. Um, but Burgess himself then tries to sort of uh, resurrect uh, his novel by saying, no, you, you need chapter 21 to make it a proper work of art, a proper novel. Um, I don't buy the argument, but I understand him making it. However, he repudiated A Clockwork Orange Anthony Burgess was a polymath. He wrote poetry, he wrote, com you know, musical compositions, but everyone associates him with that novel. I mean, he wrote loads of novels and none of them were sort of dystopian youth gangs. They were very serious philosophical, you know, fiction. I've never read any other Anthony, Anthony Burgess other than The Clockwork Orange, um, which kind of makes his point for, for him. Um, and he repudiated A Clockwork Orange. He was very frustrated that that's what people you know, saw him as responsible for rather than all the other stuff he did. And he actually, he, on the one hand, he delivered a couple of lectures on censorship, where he was against you know, artistic censorship, but also he repudiated A Clockwork Orange. Now, he didn't withdraw it from circulation from the market like Kubrick did, or at least in Britain, Kubrick did. But he, 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 he was very sneery uh, and sniping at his own work in A Clockwork Orange. And he wrote poetry and one of, you know, he wrote love poetry to his two wives. One died, he remarried. He didn't have two wives at the same time. And to the second wife, he wrote uh, some poetry, basically completely repudiating Clockwork Orange, saying this isn't the type of guy I am. And he repudiated it to students that he was lecturing to. Um, so that, you know, I find this book brilliant in its own terms. I find the history around it, both of the artist Anthony Burgess and the artist Stanley Kubrick, fascinating. So it was a banned book, uh, as I say, for its, its, its portrayals of sexual violence and violence, which are unseemly in some ways. I say that, you know, the, the paedophilia in Lolita is unseemly. Um, I can get past those because to me they're fundamentally essential to the book that was written. Um, but I'd equally I'd understand if people chose not to read A Clockwork Orange because of it or not to see the film. I mean, the film is more cartoonishly offensive in its portrayal of the rape uh, than the book, I feel. Um, but, I, you know, I find it very sad that it was banned for specific things about it when there's a much wider panoply you know it's a discussion about morality and societal morality and it's falls foul in certain u.s states of morality um it's a discussion about sort of base human condition as was lord of the flies you know it's it's a similar reversion to our animalistic natures um it's about gender it's about free will and the lack of it when Alex is reconditioned. But there's, as I've tried to explain, over and above these sort of textual things, it's it has so much to offer about the literary nature of fiction and trying to define it, as Burgess did in a very traditional way, how much of a role morality plays. You know, the history of the novel was all about morality of the characters. Um, I don't see that's necessarily hold in our in our world of moral relativism and greater complexity of the 21st century that we currently inhabit. But it, they're vital touchstones on the way to trying to define, you know, where we are with the novel today. So I just find this sort of endlessly fascinating ref set of refractions upon refractions. And that, that it's banned book nature is a tiny, almost insignificant part of this book. There's so much more to consider and to the debate around it. OK, so that's all I wanted to say. Other than to encourage everyone else who makes content, please pick a banned book of your choice and talk about it. OK, till next time. Thanks very much.